we left um, the new forest under a beautiful blue sky and now we're in Arundel just before Brighton and that's Arundel Castle up on the hill and it's cold and blustery and a bit spitting um, and I'm in a lovely summer dress <laughs> with my jacket over the top. <laughs> Can never tell what it's going to do. We've just come inside the walls of Arundel Castle and we know we're not visiting because we're actually on our way to our last stop for tonight to Brighton but this was just an unscheduled little pit stop. We've got an hour's park. We thought we'd just come and have a quick look to see what was here because we really didn't know that we we're going to be coming past here at all and so we're not going to be buying tickets to go into a castle when we have no time. It's a huge castle absolutely huge castle and beautiful beautiful gardens the collector's old garden and walled gardens it would be sublime but you would need an entire day i think to do this really mm. and do it any justice but i'll try and see if i can photograph it better for you to show you the rest of the castle on the hill this would be definitely worthwhile to do a day trip here mm. this is just in the main square or one of the little squares antiques and military beautiful buildings here really a wide range of different architecture which is really really pretty lots of the lovely ones there with the white and dark timbers on them sort of Tudor style I suppose you call those ones really really lovely buildings all the way around looks like a very pretty town I wish I had more time to spend in it very pretty town Arundel. You definitely must make it a pit stop if you're down this way, that's for sure. Some of these gorgeous stores that you come across. That's got really pretty summer clothing, but look how beautiful it's called lavender. And they've got all different colour lavenders out the front. Looks like there's some nice things in there as well. But my suitcase is chocolate block. Underneath, we were talking about getting a table bottom to put a top on. Yeah. Yeah. Love these places, this, isn't that a lovely, lovely, yeah, beautiful. A couple of nice doggies there. Beautiful pieces there. That would look lovely out the front of our place. It's a lovely little table as well with the a very old marble top on it, I'd say. Mm. Secret garden, and look where it leads. Into a back alley with lots and lots of treasures again. Oh, so interesting, isn't it? I love these places. Could spend days in places like this. And these are those beautiful, would these be Tudor style, darling? They would, wouldn't they? Yes, Tudor style. Yeah, yeah. No. Buildings. Not built then. But that, David doesn't think they were actually built then. Though they look fairly ancient to me, my love. Maybe redone at some stage, 1800s, he thinks. But we just parked on the bridge just over there. And unfortunately, we only had an hour's park, so... I can't venture into all these wonderful antique shops. They're just everywhere. If you're an antique lover, Arundel's a good place to come, that's for sure. the beautiful grand hotel yes great hotel brighton and some glorious flowers down in the foyer but i just wanted to show you this incredible staircase and look all the way up to that lovely cupola at the top just touch the button there you go 
people coming down there now. It's just beautiful. A very grand hotel, as it says. So we're headed down to the foyer now. Actually, we can take the stairs because they're nice, easy ones. And we're going to go and venture out. This is my last day here in England. So we're going to venture out and discover the Brighton foreshore. There you go, that looks down into the foyer. Let's go off on an adventure. We've just left the hotel and Walton on the seafront, which I'll show you later. But we're walking towards a place that David wanted to take me to called The Lanes. We're not quite there yet, but I just saw this beautiful place, Hotel du Vin and Bistro. It looks so pretty. So let's go down and discover what these lanes are all about. We are now in the heart of what they call The Lanes and I can see what David was talking about. It's so pretty. There's actually so much to see here. So Italian pizzeria over there, Donatello. Zoom out. Gorgeous architecture, very pretty, loaded with cafes and restaurants. Another really little one. Oh, look at all the beautiful jewelry in this window. Wow. Gosh, pre-love jewelry. Lots of wonderful diamonds, goodness me. This is supposedly a Celtic sword mm. of some sort. My goodness. Thanks to it. First century. Goodness gracious. Uli Crayshade's area, period, a thousand year old. Greek free. Wow. we've just ventured into we had no idea is all about pre-loved jewelry so there's one pre-loved jewelry store after another but I've never seen every single window looks like this mm -hmm. there's just so many different kinds of the other place was full of diamonds this is rubies and emeralds and gold it's one opposite me at the moment that's just all about gold wow Well, I've, I've told David which necklace I want now, so you know where to come back to, darling, don't you? You'll never find it again. No. <laughs> yes, you would if you really wanted to. <laughs> oh, I can find out, don't you worry. Sounds perfect for me. <laughs> How are you feeling about this being our last day? It usually happens in Italy. This has never happened before that we're somewhere else. He has no words. Welcome to the Royal Pavilion. We're just going up to have a look at this now. This is built by one of the kings that we're going to check which one. And I was just looking at this gorgeous pub right next to it. People are practicing getting on a surfboard there. How interesting. <laughs> the Royal Pavilion, Pavilion Shop and the Royal Pavilion Tea. Here we go, let's have a look. Actually not telling us which king it was built for, but it was built originally in the 1820s, so we would have to check who that was who was in power at that time. But it was totally restored in the 1990s and I can see some parts still have some restoration going on right now as you will see, but it's incredibly impressive and obviously the inspiration was brought back from India. That's an incredible design 
drawing there. East front of the Royal Pavilion was shown in John Nash's views at the Royal Pavilion at Brighton in 1826. Gosh, David just surprised me. The building that I was looking at over there, which I thought was the pavilion, is just the it gatehouse. Is, it is. It is the pavilion. Oh, it is the pavilion. <laughs> oh, look, would you stop teasing me? And this over here houses the Brighton Museum and gallery, art gallery. So, oh, Royal Pavilion, it's in that way. So, yeah, David is just being a tease, as he often is. David just loves sunflowers. <laughs> We couldn't but not do a selfie in a spot like this. Look at the gardens and the pavilion behind or parts thereof. And beautiful gardens that surround and it's a very popular place as you can just imagine. It's so gorgeous. It's a gate archway. Isn't that beautiful? This is rather impressive. And we've got police cars and ambulances and I don't know what's going on. And we're in the place that looks like it should be so tranquil because it looks like we're standing in the middle of some Indian palace. But we're in the middle of Brighton and it's a busy place, but it's really quite impressive, that's for sure. I know it's going to be hard for you to see him with this light, but that's George the Fourth, and I had guessed was it King George? And gosh, that was a good guess, I tell you, because I'm not great on English royalty, <laughs> but I got it right. Well, finally, after walking through all those beautiful Indian-inspired <laughs> pavilions, we're now on famous. Brighton Beach and it's actually a really pleasant afternoon and it's a lovely temperature and it's school holiday so you can see there's a lot going on there's the Brighton Palace Pier down there we'll just be walking up here to our left what do you think David you like it here cool. you've been here many times I suppose haven't you Sit on the stony pebbles of Brighton Beach over you my darling as a child mm -hmm. yeah and as an adult as well I'm sure, yeah. And the water is actually quite a pretty colour, I must admit, under this sort of grey, well, half grey, half blue. As you can see, blue, but if I look behind me, <laughs> typical English day, half and half, but it's very lovely indeed. There you have it, the famous Brighton Pier, which is really, really pretty actually. Um, and the pebbles are too hard for me to walk on, I've realized with my injuries. So I've just come a few meters, but I said to David, we were going to walk down the beach. And I said, <laughs> once I got onto the pebbles, they sort of slide and sink underneath your legs. So it's just working my muscles in kind of in a way that I shouldn't be working them probably at the moment. And they're a bit tired. I've done a lot in the last month, a lot, so I do have to be a little bit careful so we might not do the whole length on the pebbles. <laughs> and of course the whole way along the front they actually have lots of little kiosks and cafes and little shops and there's even the lifeguard tower just over there as well. And yes, there are people swimming today, or you can't see them from here, but we saw some people down there kind of paddling, I call it. <laughs> it's not the best day, but then again, for English people, I'm sure it's quite a warm day, so they're getting in there. 
I just wanted to show you how long it is from here you actually get a really really good view don't you and I can see the Ferris wheel going around right at the end there and there's a big dipper looking thing right at the end as well you've got all of your what we would call Luna Park type rides and things fabulous and it's very popular today with all the school children and if you're an Aperol Spritz lover, this place just to the right of the pier with the huge disco balls will definitely serve you an Aperol Spritz. <laughs> there you have it. beautiful beautiful hotel we're really happy that we chose it it's probably the most handsome one we think we've seen so far a lovely room just off from the bar here at the Grand and they have a really lovely exhibition on of artworks and photography and design of the history of how the hotel has come about over the years and the works that have been done and the changes and it's really really lovely so this is just off the the lovely lounge bar on the ground floor